Evil is often deceptive. Rarely do you come across someone who takes sick pleasure in tormenting others without attempting to mask it behind a wall of innocence. I'm your host James and today I'm bringing you the top 10 scary evil people who pretended to be good. And we're starting off the list with Ted Bundy. Not a name you'd ever associate with innocence. Ted Bundy was one of the most notorious uh, sadistic criminals in American history. Between 1974 and 78, he took the lives of 30 young women, possibly more, across seven different states. He'd lure his victims using his charismatic personality, taking them to a secluded location before attacking and restraining them, loading them into his car and taking them away, never to be seen again. Pure evil can often look charming and innocent on the outside, but in Bundy's case, it goes a step further. Bundy actually worked on a hotline that helped prevent people from taking their own lives. Yeah, he was one of the folks taking those calls. Pretty noble work. On the outside, you'd look at someone like that and be like, wow, you're a fantastic person. Convincing people to go on living, that it's worth having them here. Incredibly ironic that Bundy spent time talking to people on the phone, convincing them to keep themselves alive, when in his own time, he'd ignore his victim's pleas to stay alive. Completely bonkers. If you are liking our channel so far, then don't forget to, uh, you know, leave your comments and thoughts below. I like uh, hearing what you guys have to say. At number nine, we have Jim Jones. Jim Jones was one of the most notorious cult leaders in history, responsible for convincing 918 people to take their own lives, and actually a significant portion of those people were forced to do it. He was a charismatic leader who gathered a very large following, but he started showing uh, his dark side, turning what he originally sold as this peaceful, quote unquote, uh, socialist paradise into a full on dictatorship. People couldn't even leave the settlement, and he surrounded the place with armed soldiers. Yeah very democratic. And this all culminated in the aforementioned Jonestown Massacre. Before all this madness though, Jim Jones was known as an outspoken activist. He even worked as the director of the Human Rights Commission in Indianapolis. Depending on people's political views, he would have either looked like a menace or a hero, but I don't think anyone would have predicted things to go the way they did. At least not uh, early on, anyway. Next on the list we have Dennis Rader. This guy was a Boy Scout leader. He was a member of the Lutheran Church, actually the president of the church council. On the outside, he was a dedicated family man, an upstanding member of the Wichita, Kansas community. He was also a despicable monster. Between 1974 and 91, he took the lives of at least 10 people, possibly more, and he loved what he did so much that he actually gave himself his own nickname, BTK. Just give that a quick Google to find out what it stands for. Not pretty. It's people like this that really test my faith in uh, humanity. Gaining everyone's trust, having this outward image of being a good, decent human being, when really it's just a complete facade. It's, it's also cases like this that make me roll my eyes whenever someone goes, oh, but he could, he could never do that. He's not like that. Well, he can, and he did. Finding despicable people with an innocent facade was not difficult. It would have uh, been much harder to form a list of evil people who are always suspected of being so. Number seven, Dr. Harold Shipman. We put our trust into our doctors, helping to keep us in good health and providing care and reassurance in the worst of times. Doctors are often thought of not just as good people, but great people. Highly respected and highly appreciated, most of the time anyway. But reality goes to show that no matter how green and majestic a field is, there's always a bad apple somewhere in there. Dr. Harold Shipman was responsible for the deaths of around 218 patients between 1972 and 1998, and this wasn't due to negligence. These deaths were carried out on purpose, earning him the nickname Dr. Death. He mainly targeted elderly female patients, administering lethal doses of diamorphine and writing off their deaths as old age or falsifying their medical records to show that they had been in poor health when in reality they were perfectly fine when they came in. A fellow doctor, Dr. Linda Reynolds, uh, started becoming suspicious of Shipman as he had a high number of patients dying off while in his care. He was arrested in 1998 and convicted for the deaths of 15 patients. He hanged himself in his cell in 2004. Next on the list is John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy committed heinous crimes while concealing his dark side behind an innocent 
facade. Gacy was, an, was active in his community, often participating in local events and children's parties as a clown. Now, clowns are often associated with horror nowadays, partially thanks to this creep. Uh, but back then, the, the whole maniacal clown thing wasn't really a thing, as much anyway. On the surface, Gacy appeared to be friendly and charismatic. He was involved in charitable activities and was well liked by his neighbors. But as we all know, Gacy was actually a predator. Gacy would restrain his victims and have his way with them before finally asphyxiating them. He buried some of his victims beneath his house, discarded others in nearby rivers. In 1978, Gacy's crimes were finally exposed when the disappearance of Robert Peace led police to investigate Gacy. They, there, they discovered evidence of his gruesome acts, including personal belongings of some of his missing uh, victims and decomposing bodies beneath his house. Gacy was arrested, tried, and sentenced to death in 1980. And in our number five spot is Charles Cullen. Once again, another man in the medical field who betrayed the trust of his patients. Cullen worked as a nurse in multiple hospitals across New Jersey. Over a span of 16 years, from 1987 to 2003, he caused the deaths of a minimum of 40 patients. He would administer lethal doses of medications like insulin to his victims. He deliberately targeted elderly, sick, or vulnerable patients. His motivations, still somewhat murky, leading to various speculations. Some believe his actions were driven by a desire for control. Others suggest a warped sense of mercy, with Cullen claiming he was sparing his victims from further suffering. Cullen's malevolent spree went unnoticed for years until a vigilant co-worker observed some of his suspicious behavior and authorities were alerted, leading to his arrest in 2003. In 2006, Cullen was brought to justice and sentenced to 11 consecutive life terms in prison. Next up, we have Nanny Doss, aka the Giggling Granny. This case always creeped me out. Uh, you know who you never expect to try and end your life? A sweet, smiling old lady. If you were all alone with a friendly old granny and God told you someone in the room was evil, you'd probably be the one pleading for forgiveness. Doss presented herself as a loving and caring woman, but behind her innocent smile lurked something dark and sinister. Over a span of several decades, Doss poisoned four of her husbands, her mother, and several other family members, including her sister and grandchildren. She used various substances like arsenic and rat poison to get the job done, and her outwardly caring and nurturing appearance allowed her to evade suspicion for years. Her crimes finally became known in 1954, though, after the suspicious deaths of her family members raised concerns amongst authorities. Traces of poison were discovered in the victims' bodies, leading to Doss's arrest. In 1955, Nanny Doss pleaded guilty to the unaliving of her fifth husband and was sentenced to life in prison. Later in 63, she confessed to her other crimes, providing all the details about her methods and motives. Doss spent the remainder of her life behind bars, dying in prison in 1965. All right, you'd never expect to die at the hands of your grandmother, so the same can probably be said about the very woman who gave birth to you. Next up, we have Mary Beth Tinning. Mary Beth Tinning, born on September 11, 1942, was responsible for the deaths of several of her own offspring, who seemed to die under suspicious circumstances. Tinning would explain the deaths as natural or accidental, deflecting suspicion while continuing to appear as a loving, caring mother. The suspicions surrounding Tinning uh, intensified after numerous family members died unexpectedly. In 85, Tinning's crimes finally came to an end when her daughter Tammy Lynn died under dubious circumstances. She was convicted for the death of Tammy Lynn, but never officially for the deaths of eight others. Uh, she was eventually released on parole in 2018. Javed Iqbal. He was responsible for the disappearance of numerous individuals, mainly young boys whom he preyed upon. Between 1998 and 99, Iqbal lured multiple vulnerable young people, mainly runaways. He then subjected them to unspeakable acts before disposing of their remains, dismembering them before dissolving them in vats of hydrochloric acid. Iqbal presented himself as an ordinary individual, a hardworking businessman. 
But finally, in 1999, he sent a letter to the authorities confessing to his crimes, providing gruesome details about his victims and their fate. He and his accomplice were found dead in their cells in 2001. It was stated that they took their own lives, although it was obvious that that was not the case. But did anyone care to investigate any further? No. And who could blame them, honestly? Finally, we have Christopher Lee Watts. Not only is this guy a complete and utter monster, he's also incredibly stupid. Uh, Chris Watts seemed on the outside to be a loving father and husband. His neighbors saw him as unassuming, quiet, a decent family man. And what makes this case extra disturbing is that there's plenty of footage from before his heinous crime took place that shows him with his daughters, seems to love them deeply. He just looks like a happy father. It's almost impossible to imagine him doing what he did when you watch that footage. If you don't know the story, Chris Watts uh, started having an affair with a woman named Nicole Kessinger. Uh, and wanting to start a new life with her, Chris decided to take the life of his wife and his two daughters, claiming they had disappeared, with his wife Shannon having left her wedding ring behind. You know, yeah, great plan, because you couldn't just get divorced or anything. Completely maddening. I absolutely hate this prick, even though we're completely aware of the double lives people can lead, that no matter how sweet and just someone seems on the outside, they could be hiding something truly dark within. Watching him hug his daughters, you just can't wrap your head around it. It's easy to see how people fall into the traps of sadistic maniacs or get caught up in dangerous cults or start a family with the love of your life, never suspecting for a second that the person you've built a life with has actually been a monster the entire time. With all that said, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.